okay we have seen the divergent boundary and convergent boundary all that is ripped is transform boundary so in this thing in this boundary convection currents are parallel to the uh, plate boundaries therefore the plates slip past each other they slip and slide therefore there won't be any subduction there won't be any volcanism there won't be any accretion prism there won't be any fall mountains but there will be seismic activity due to uh, seismic activity and the rips and falls will be forming because of friction between these two plates uh, example is the San Andreas fault because of the Joan de Fuca plate and North American plate sliding past each other. Coming to evidences of plate tectonic theory, we have CDD evidences given by Wigner, which are jig surface, rocks match, fossils, paleoclimatic, that is the cold fields and glacial evidences, behavior of lemmings. C4 spreading evidences, we have the presence of more axle lift valley in it, presence of trench and uh, broken uh, cr uh, crust rocks there and uh, volcanism and uh, earthquake activity in these two age of rocks is younger near the MOR and older away from the MOR also FS is uh, sea floor splitting is a special case of plate interaction as we have seen in the divergent plate boundary and next evidence is earthquake evidences uh, in 1960 series of seismographs were placed as part of WWSSN which is World War Seismograph Network this was mainly done to detect nuclear tests because of this, uh, the earthquake mapping was done. This helped us identify the plate boundaries. So this was the pattern of the earthquakes. From this, we identified plate boundaries like this. Also, uh, deep and intermediate focus earthquakes. If it is less than 70 km, it will be shallow focus. 70 to 380 is intermediate, greater than 300 is deep focus. So these two types of uh, earthquakes could not be explained before PTT. So PTT, what it did is it linked the dynamism of a mantle and movement of uh, molten magma and deep parts with these earthquakes so it offers an explanation next is benioff vadati zone which is this one this is inclined at 35 degrees to 38 degrees with the horizontal also it is a zone of earthquakes this coincides with the direction of the subducting plate this is a subducting plate the angle and the depth coincides with the subducting plate therefore ptt can explain this using the ocean plate subduction at o, o and oc <coughs> boundaries also, this is a zone of deep and intermediate focus earthquake. So this also offers explanation for this. Uh, next thing is hotspot evidences. Hotspots are localized volcanic eruptions with magma sourced from deep mantle, sometimes as deep as core mantle boundary. So these are standalone volcanic locations. So these volcanism will not be at the uh, plate boundaries. Rather, it will be inside the plate, uh, intraplate volcanism. As we can see here, this is intraplate. This is a plate boundary. So this will be here. Uh, so later some of them as we have seen the divergent plate boundary they will develop into the domal upliftment later rift valley and nascent ocean and all those things. So it may develop into the plate, divergent plate boundary. So what do we know about the hotspots? The exact mechanism is not known but we know that they are sourced from deep mantle. They are interplate and they do not move. So since they do not move but there are evidences of hotspot raising on its surface which are volcanic islands and volcanic evidences like we have seen we can see from this diagram uh, so these are the volcanic evidences of uh, volcanic islands and these are the volcanic evidences on the earth surface and these ones are the oldest and these are the youngest under the youngest there is a hotspot so from this we can say that the plate is moving and the hotspot is fixed here uh, therefore the hotspot uh, volcanism is uh, being traced like this so this can be seen in the real world in both uh, pacific ocean and indian ocean in the Pacific Ocean, we have the Hawaiian Islands, we have the Midway Islands and the Emperor Seamount chain. So all these islands uh, have the have been traced, have been formed from the volcanism erupting from the Hawaiian hotspot. Uh, so these ones, uh, Emperor are the oldest and the Hawaiian are the youngest. So we can see the Pacific plate is moving like this from here to here and then here to here. So from this we can derive the uh, orientation of the islands and the age of islands. We derived how the Pacific plate moves. Coming to the Indian Ocean, we have the hotspot on the Reunion Island. So this will be the youngest and the oldest with the Deccan Laval Plateau, which is 62 million years old. In between, we have the Mauritius, Chagos Island, Maldives and Lakshadweep. So from this orientation of the rocks and age of islands, we can say Indian plate move like this. Uh, so that takes care of the hotspot evidences. Last evidence we have is modern satellite tracking. This almost conclusively proves that PTT is right. Coming to a driving mechanism of PTT, the biggest limitation of the Wegener was that his inability to explain the driving mechanism. PTT on the other hand gives much better scientific explanation of the driving mechanism. So the main uh, fundamental 
cause for the plate movement or the convection currents this was taken from the arthur holmes who has given it in 1929 so these are sources from the mantle as we know uh, so according to pdt the force responsible for the plate movements are forces from within the earth whereas cdt talked about forces outside it also like tidal pull and all those but everything about uh, convection currents is not convincing alone this is one of the limitation of the ptt like how how the convection currents develop why do they intensify why do they die off still much needs to be known but we know that main source of the convection currents is internal heat which is sourced from the two sources which are radioactivity and residual gravitational heat from the ancient nebula now coming to the three fundamental forces that are acting on the plates we have the mantle traction drag slab full force and uh, ridge push so slab pull force is due to the weight of the slab and also the force from the uh, convection current uh, convection current limbs this is due to convection current limbs and uh, ridge push is due to the more formation so here we have the more formation uh, initially the rocks a are pushed together because of the uh, because this magma solidifies and the new magma pushes this rock so this is the ridge push so these are the three fundamental forces acting on it so this is the driving mechanism is done you now we are going to the critical evaluation of pdt it is a very modern theory it has enough ge geological evidences to support the theory also it can explain fall mountains at the peaks volcanoes and how continents broke uh, lithosphere floating over astronomy space very valid it uh, clc is the wrong concept in the present notion <coughs> but it uh, there are some limitation it does not convincingly explain the mechanism of convection currents and hotspot volcanism as we've seen also the nature of the first crust and how first continent separated is not explained in the original ptt but micro plate tectonic theory which is more different form of ptt can explain this uh, next the divergent plate boundary has much more activity than the convergent plate boundary so at surface area should be expanding rather uh, according to ptt the earth surface area remains constant so we must reconsider if the earth is expanding